Welcome to VKS Coding and in this video we'll talk about network protocol. So what is network protocol? So how two systems communicate with each other by following certain rules. Basically it's a set of standards, rules and uh, regulation which is defined how the two system can com communicate with each other. So here I have defined system one and system two and based on following some rule they can communicate with each other. That is nothing but a network protocol. So now let's let's see what is OSI model. So OSI full form is the open system interconnection. OSI model is a framework that is used for to uh, communicate between the system over the internet. So it contains uh, seven layers and first one is a physical layer, second one is a data link layer, third one is a network layer, fourth layer, fourth one is a transport layer that having the TCP and UDP. These protocols comes from the transport layer. And fifth layer is a session layer, sixth layer is a presentation layer, and seventh layer is a application layer. So what are the protocols we see like HTTP, WebSocket, WebRTC, FTP, SMTP, those are belongs to the application layer. So in transport layer, uh, basically used for how the data is getting transferred. And the application layer is basically other application can access the network services. So for that application layer can be used. So mostly we'll talk about the application layer and the transport layer because in, when we think about uh, respect to the system design interview, knowledge of this uh, layer will be uh, helpful for clearing the system design interview and taking the decision also like how the communication protocol will be on particular design, right? So let's uh, proceed further and get started with the transport layer. So in transport layer we'll cover two protocol. First one is a TCP, second one is a UDP. What is TCP? TCP is the transmission control protocol and in, in TCP how the client and server communicate each other. So basically I have defined here how the client and server will communicate each other. So basically in the first when the client wanted to send the data, so first client initiate the connection to the server via sending the sync sequence number. So first client will be in the step one, client will be send the sequence number to the server. In step two, server will acknowledge and send its own sequence number to the client in step two. And step three, the, ser the client will acknowledge the server. And in step four, the data will be transferred via client to the server. And each uh, packet, whatever the data will be transferred uh, to the server, server will acknowledge the client whatever the packets are received and packets are also arranged in the client side so like I have arranged here the sequence number one two three so similar way it will be received in the server side and if any packet is not received by a server then again the client will resend those packet missing packets to the server so this is how the uh, TCP works and where it can be used, it is used in the uh, email communication, message transfer, file transfer. So these areas where the uh, basically, and it is a connection oriented protocol where we cannot compromise with the data, there we can use the TCP because it's a connection oriented protocol. Now let's check the other protocol one is the UDP protocol. So UDP is nothing but the user datagram protocol. So suppose we have a two system here, system one, system one, and system two. Suppose this system want to transfer the data to this system. So uh, basically the packets are not arranged and it will directly transfer over the internet to the uh, second machine. And the packets are also not arranged. So it can be uh, received in any order. And basically the uh, receiver will also not uh, send the acknowledgement to the uh, sender machine and uh, anyhow the, it is a connectionless uh, protocol and where it can be used it will be used in the live streaming audio video and how why it is used in the audio video and live streaming because it is very fast in TCP we have to maintain a connection and there is a three-way handshake uh, connection happens but in UDP this is a connection link protocol and there is no handshake required for sending the data. So that's why it is fast. So I hope it is clear till now what is the TCP protocol, what is the UDP protocol. So we have covered the transport layer protocol. Now we'll proceed with the application layer and we'll see what are the protocols used in the application layer.
so in application layer there will be two types of architecture protocol first one is a client server architecture and second one is the peer to peer architecture in the client server architecture client will send the request to the server and server will respond to the client so this is basically the client server architecture in the application layer and what is the peer to peer architecture so in the peer to peer architecture suppose three machines are connected so all three machines can talk to each other so every machine can be a client or it can be a server so now let's see the example of client server architecture protocol and the peer to peer architecture protocol so in client server architecture protocol the first one is the http so in http the client will send the request to the server and server will respond to the client and after that connection will be closed so this is how the http uh, client server communication works and where it can be used it can be used for the restful and soap application or web services where we want to develop it so there it can be used and the second one is the ftp file transfer protocol it is and how the client and server will communicate here basically uh, there is a two connection will be uh, created for the between the client and the server first one is the control connection and the second one with the data connection so once the data transfer is done then the connection will be terminated so where it can be used it can be used for file sharing so third one will be the uh, simple mail transfer protocol so basically if the user want to send mail one user one want to send a mail to the user two so how the communication will happen so here when first the user one will send the mail to the user agent then this user and agent will transfer to the mta client so mta client is nothing but a, a mail transfer agent and this mail transfer agent from the client side it will send it to the server side of the mail transfer agent and then mail transfer agent will transfer to the <coughs> user agent and that agent will transfer the uh, mail uh, to the user two uh, via pop3 or uh, imap so these are uh, protocols can be used to read the mail from the uh, remote uh, server and uh, where it can be used the smtp protocol this can be used for email transfer and the fourth fourth one is the most important for a system design interview perspective is websocket so how the websocket communication basically happens so first the client send a request to the server then the server reply back to the client via handset and between the client and the server there will be a bi uh, bi-directional persistence connection will be established between the client and server so the client can send any message to the server and server can also send the any message to the client so and after that anyone want to terminate the connection either client or server any one of them can terminate the connection and the connection will be terminated so where this can be used it can be used in real time applications like updating a mass score in the uh, quick pay or this uh, scoring update uh, applications like uh, from the server to the client keep on updating the data uh, for scores a uh, match scores like that and for chat applications also uh, we can be uh, web sockets can be used i hope the client server architecture protocol is clear uh, to you so now let's uh, check the second type of the architecture is the peer to peer architecture so this is the one is the peer to peer architecture so uh, so in peer to peer architecture we have to discuss the web rtc but before discussing the web rtc let's see uh, if the browser want to send the audio file to the browser to uh, then how it is going to happen without web rtc so browser one first, first will send the audio to the web server then web server first identify uh, the where the browser to uh, is connected and all the information then the browser server will transfer the audio to the web browser so if you see there is a two hop right to transferring the audio from browser one to web server then web server to browser two and once the web server receive the audio file from the web browser then it has to identify where the web browser two are there and then it can transfer the uh, the audio file so this you can see how things are working without webrtc but if we use webrtc how these things will become very easy so here i have given the example of the webrtc so basically the full form of webrtc is web real time communication so here the web browser one want to send the audio file to the browser too then it can directly send the audio file to the browser too so this can be done via the help of webrtc so where it can be used the webrtc in the real time voice and video call applications on and even in the live streaming also we can use the webrtc so i hope i am able to make clear about the network protocol so here we have used the different types of 
protocols like HTTP, WebRTC, WebSocket. So these protocols are very important in the system design perspective. So in future video, I'll be also covering the uh, topics related to the system design. So do subscribe my channel.